right. Yo, hey, Tim. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to switch it over. All right, cool. I'm going to switch it over, too. Uh, so we were just talking on Zoom that you're in Mexico. How long have you been there? I have been in Mexico for like three and a half weeks. <laughs> That's so nice. How's the virus down there? Um, I mean, it's it's going. It's not as bad as um, in the States, obviously. Uh, yeah. And the government's taking it way more seriously here. And and so I would say it's, it's okay, as good as it can be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like the U.S. is not a scary place right now. So, um, the main reason why I invited you is because, as I said, I got to know you from Peel, right? <laughs> and then yep. uh, I got to see your work online. I'm a fan. But um, never really got to see the face until we met at the alumni thing. And then you also turned up at the event. And you're just like super cool and super like always want to share. Um, so tell me a little bit about, about about yourself, like what you do just for people, because you're always super mysterious. Like you said, you never really make a reveal <laughs> on Instagram. Um, yeah, so I am I'm a freelance illustrator. I've been a freelance illustrator for probably seven or eight years. I do mostly like editorial stuff, so mostly for newspapers and magazines and like websites and hmm. trying to do more like commercial advertising stuff too. I do some of that, but not as much. So hoping to get more into it. Did you, did you know that you wanted to do editorial when you were at school? Uh, I didn't know that for a long time. I didn't really know what editorial was. <laughs> uh, I pretty much didn't know anything about art, really, for a long time. <laughs> but the reason why I went to art school is because I wanted to be like a video game concept artist. Uh, I really liked playing Halo. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then once I went to school, I kind of learned more about, like, different types of comics outside of just superheroes that I didn't know anything about uh, and just like what illustrate all the different types of illustration all the good stuff you know yeah you know. It, so I, you know like sometimes when people think of like editorial they think of like um, oh you have to be super conceptual you have to read a lot of articles but it's interesting that you were saying you were into, uh, you know, concept art for games, and then now it kind of shows on your editorial work too. So how do you think, like, um, your personality and, like, your interest translates into um, your concepts or your client's work? I mean, sometimes not as much as I would like. Just, yeah, you know, different art directors give you different liberty, but obviously I'm, like, a huge like sci-fi, fantasy, like geek. Yeah. And so anytime I can try and channel any sort of that, I, I'm i obviously stoked on it. But also, like, I just, I love the figure. I love drawing the figure. It's what I do a lot. It's probably what I do best. And so pretty much it's rare for there to not be a figure mm -hmm. in any of my illustrations. So that, that gets channeled quite a bit. Yeah. And like, when you first start graduate, when you first graduated, um, did you immediately kind of like try entering the editorial work, or you start making your own pieces first and start selling them? How did you go? Yeah, so by senior year, I knew for sure, because like other years of school, you know, you're kind of experimenting and your style is sort of like changing a lot as you learn about all these new artists and like. You know, you're like excited about new medias and like did new digital stuff. And so, but by, by my senior year, I had kind of like figured out 
for the most part, like just where that all landed and it all landed sort of in editorial. So right after I graduated, I moved sh straight to New York and sort of hmm. gave it the old, the old try. It took a long time, but I feel like I'm still working on it, honestly. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I don't think we'll ever feel that like, oh, we're there, you know? <laughs> Even seeing like those artists, um, that have been working for 10, 20 years doing editorials. I feel like you're probably still kind of like, I'm still learning something. I'm still not doing things right. Yeah, for sure. Definitely feel that way. So uh, once you start editorial, then you start making your own content, like your comics, and then you start selling them. You start yeah. like, going to cons or just to website and Instagram. Yeah, so I mean, I love illustration and definitely like my career but really my my true passion is comics it's like what i consume the most it's my favorite type of art it's what inspires me the most and so um even in college i was i was still mostly a comic guy but comics making comics is really hard it takes so long and even though i've been drawing my whole life i don't i haven't been writing for all that long so i don't feel like i'm like super strong writer so it just takes me a long time to make comics but i pretty much got started trying to make my own comics right when school let out and i did some like small zines to like hand out at mm -hmm. fairs i loved i wanted to go to all the comic book fairs like tcaf in toronto and mocha and cab in new york and i i, I didn't actually start tabling at them for a long time because i didn't feel like i had enough work to sell Right. And then finally, like one year, I had m more access to like printing, like Rezo stuff. Yeah. And I finally felt like I had enough stuff. And it's kind of just like been going at it since, just tabling at cons and just meeting new people and selling stuff that way and online as well. Um, now I just need to make more comics, though. It's been a long time. <laughs> Like you said, it's kind of hard to start, right? When you're just doing illustrations and illustrations, and then once you start, once you start wanting to make your comic, it feels like, oh, I've never been writing for a long time. How do you how how do you get past through that? Do you just like, you know, I'm just gonna make a passion project and just go at it? Yeah, I think um, I still am trying to figure that answer out, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think what you have to really just accept is that like not every you're not going to get better at comics until you or writing until you just do it more so maybe like just uh, don't be so self-conscious about that like your first comic has to be just the best literary and artistic genius work ever and uh, if you just keep making them they'll just get better and better. Honestly, like, that's so true, but at the same time, it's also, like, super hard, right? Because you feel like, I'm going to spend all this time making all these panels, and yeah. what if it comes out stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. And, um, and, like, you know, being a writer is, like, more tied to being, like, intellectual somehow, and it's, like, if, if this is bad writing, like, it's going to just look bad on yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And like, I'm sorry, what were you saying? I was gonna say, I mean, one thing that's been really helpful obviously is like a following on the internet. Just mm -hmm. like every time you think like, oh, this sucks. But then someone's like, oh, that's great. Right. <laughs> but that's has helpful. it ever been, has, has it ever been like the opposite for you? Like when you think it's great, then you post it and then it, it flops and then you're like, I'm not going to make this anymore. Or you just like, you know, whatever. I'm going to take the positive, the negative, I'm going to be like, whatever. Um, maybe, I don't think so. I think, I mean, if anything, the, the stuff that really flops, like on Instagram or something, <laughs> would be more like the, uh, the like professional jobs, you know? People mm -hmm. like just more of the personal drawings. And so it might there might be something that, maybe it isn't like the best drawing ever, but like a job I was really excited to do and I share it and it gets like nothing because it's 
at the end of the day, it looks like uh, just like whatever boring. Yeah. <laughs> boring. Yeah, I guess because we know the context, and these people are just gonna be like, "Yeah, I don't care about that article." <laughs> yeah. So but, maybe. Uh, that's it. Yeah, my agent was saying like, uh, now when people look for work on Instagram, they kind of like look at the talent. It's like you can just post whatever you're passionate in um, on Instagram, but then if they want to know if they're legit, if they can really work with them, then they'll go to the website. So I think uh, I'm trying to also kind of like not to post as much work stuff anymore on Instagram, just because it feels like. Do you, do you ever feel like, to me at least, when I came to New York, it feels a little bit of like a prestige uh, race. Like, oh, this guy got a job from this magazine. This guy got a job from this newspaper. Why yeah, can't I? Right. Yeah, right? That feeling. So how did you, um, I'm still learning to like balance that side of being a freelancer. But how did you finally start to be like, you know, um, life has to go and work is work. Because like when I first started, it always felt like if I'm not working, I'm not doing my best. Can, can you ask the question again? I didn't, I didn't quite hear you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So my question is like, um, after you start freelancing, have you ever felt that like you have to keep working to make your work or and when uh, did you start breaking out of that mental space? Like, you know, life has to go on, work is work, but you have to have the balance. I mean, I, I always feel like I have to work just all the time. Well, that's yeah. not true. <laughs> Actually, I'm no, that is true. I always feel like I have to work all the time. I don't work all the time, but I always feel like I have to work all the time. Okay. Um, and what do you think about that? I think, I think it's, you know, in, on one hand, it's good because I don't feel like I have to work on editorial all the time. I just feel like I have to draw all the time because I love to draw. So uh, I guess that's good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really have control of like, even if I wanted to work all the time on like editorial, that's not really in my hands at all because... I'm just at the mercy of like anyone wanting to hire me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, like, I definitely don't work all the time. I go long stretches of time, especially right now in COVID, where I just don't get any jobs. And like, that's just time that I get to work on my own stuff. So it's not a huge deal. Right. Oh, that's actually like a good point. Cause I always felt like, um, yeah, I'm working, but this all is for the sake of getting jobs, you know? But I guess it's nice. Yeah, or even just, you know, know like, just for my peace of mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. Um, so tell me about um, how you say you got like jobs that are not editorial or, you know, commercial based and uh, company based jobs through your Instagram. Yeah, I, I assume some of them. I know for sure some are th through Instagram. Some some jobs is just like, I don't know where they, they found me. Sometimes sometimes <laughs> it turns out I'm like not a good fit for it at all. And it's like, I don't know what they're <laughs> thinking. But um, I mean, it's it's been great. I, you know, I don't know like, I just post my drawings on Instagram and kind of people just like them and sometimes I get jobs, but there's not like any particular strategy that I have yeah. for getting those jobs. You and seem, you seem you to post... have a little more strategy than me. Do I? <laughs> I feel like uh, I never really like look for work on Instagram. Oh, wait, never mind. So when I first started Instagram, I just did it for fun, right? Just because um, I like it, you know? It gives me some kind of motivation to make things that I like. And then uh, 
I moved to New York, I started working, and I started seeing people like posting their editorial work or, you know, all their kind of jobs and I felt like, oh, I have to do that too. But that actually kind of like, at least to me, um, it became a problem because I felt like, oh no, I'm not posting like proper thing on Instagram. I'm not posting like client work on Instagram. And now I'm just trying to like have fun, you know? Yeah. Like, what do you think about like, I know sometimes we have to be realistic, like you have to pay the bill and everything, but um, don't you think that as illustrators, the best strategy, not the best strategy, but something that works the best would be continue doing what you like doing? Totally. I mean, I guess that's that's the dream, you know? Yeah. And but sometimes uh, you feel like if you're not doing, if you're just doing what you like, uh, you may not have a market and you may not get jobs, right? Yeah. And some artists, you know, their whole thing is that they're just so flexible with like their styles. You know, they like do vector, like super corporate vector stuff or like yeah. whatever, whatever people need. And, you know, that, that's a useful skill set to have. But for someone like me, I pretty much have my one thing to mm -hmm. a degree. It varies, but I pretty much have just drawn, drawn how I like to draw and like kind of kept my, my vision pretty concise. And, you know, when people come to me for work, they're not like, it's rare that they're not expecting that, you know, yeah. which pros and cons pros that, you know, most of my jobs I end up enjoying cons is, you know, maybe I'm missing out on some potential work <laughs> from being so uh, one dimensional. Yeah, specific. <laughs> I'll take um, that though. <laughs> but um, did you ever feel like, um, did you ever like develop this? Like, oh, I'm going to be this consistent person or it just comes out naturally? Because a lot of people always have the questions, you know, the sacred question, like, how did you get your style? Yeah, I mean, it definitely just came naturally. But over the course, like over a long course of time, you know, my, my sort of visual vocabulary still is still changing all the time and yeah. was changing a lot in college. Um, but I think it really was like the discovery of like a lot of European comics that I just, for the first time when I saw that stuff, I was like, this is it. Like, this is, <laughs> this is my favorite. And, uh, that and like a lot of manga and it was just like, I don't know. I felt like that was like a really important moment in my life and <laughs> has been like a seminal touchstone yeah. of like my work, like referencing just the comics, like that whole language of comics. Yeah. I think, I think like you said, you mentioned something about visual vocabulary and like about something that you're just super interested in that you just have the immediate connection. Um, I think sometimes people just want to force their way into making something that they think they, it looks good, but they don't really enjoy doing. And when you say uh, visual vocabulary, what do you mean by that? Like, do you mean like um, the kind of elements that you put into your images or the kind of like, how you draw something i think it's a bit of both like definitely like subject matter and like what what i like and like what i gravitate towards like kind of leaning into that more but i think a lot of it has to do with you know at the end of the day my my drawings are cartoons you know and yeah um cartooning is all about like simplification of forms and simplification of like turning things into the simplest, turning complex things into simpler and simpler things until eventually they just become symbols. Right. And me, for me, it was like finding 
what degree of, of simplification I wanted to do on certain things. For example, the fa my face is extremely simple, um, but my figures still pretty like realistic in, yeah. in terms of like anatomy and like, so just kind of a give and take for me of like figuring out what I wanted to uh, simplify and what I wanted to uh, cartoon more mm -hmm. and play with more. Yeah, I kind of read about, um, you know, this caught my cloud book, Making Comics. Understanding so Comics. Oh, comics. yeah, yeah. Great book. Yeah. yeah, he was talking about, like, the the face as a mask, and you simplify it so people can project themselves. Uh, yeah, I reread that book this year, and I feel like there was new stuff I took from it. I feel like there's new stuff to take from that book every time. It's just so much stuff. Yeah. It's a great writer. Too. It's a good book. Um, so you mentioned that you like um, games and you like, you know, those like Halo title stuff. And it really shows on your work. So outside of, you know, obviously like knowing how to draw, um, knowing how to, basically the basic of art, what do you think contributes to an artist's voice, like their, um, how they approach a problem, you know? I mean, that's a pretty complicated question. And I think it's probably different for everybody, but I mean, every, every person has a completely different life experience and just the way that they're gonna translate things visually or even like not visually, just how they perceive everything is gonna be unique to themselves and no one else no one else will ever have that, you know? And so I think uh, at the end of the day, like what really makes you you is like just those experiences that you have and like tr trying to somehow convey them, whether it's yeah. like a certain mood or humor or like just like whatever, whatever is, you know, your stuff's usually a little more moody yeah. and uh, that's like, completely unique to to your life and your circumstances you know so it's like it's less yeah, less so about like your color palette that you learned from like your color fundamental class or whatever it's just like you know your own perspective yeah i kind of agree I, um i feel like all of these things that build into your like style and voice it's super personal, but sometimes we want to force it. We see someone making something cool, and we're like, "Oh, how did they make it like that?" But in in in, in real life, it's often more like, "Why did they come up with that? Like, what experience have they encountered that shows them to work in a certain way?" Do you know uh, Olympia Zagnoli, the actor artist? Yeah, yeah, Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like one thing she mentioned that was super cool is like she said like oh I just realized why my work is always so flat is because when she like after years of not going back home she looked at her hometown and everything is so flat there and she's like oh it's been like in my mind because I grew up there but I just didn't realize it so I thought that's really cool yeah that is cool and you know at the end of the day it. it while it is life experience stuff, um, there also is some like more intentional, like, you know, looking at what inspires you and see what your favorite stuff is from it and like studying it and, you know, straight up redrawing art, like master copies of your favorite artists. And like, there's definitely like that aspect of it too. It's not just like divine inspiration and like you land on like, you know, some new new completely original style there's definitely like a lot of uh you know research and practice yeah research and study and like studying studying the greats and whatever you like um do you ever um how do you use references how do i use what references like for like photo reference 
Um, just in general, because I know some people, they create mood boards for their work. Some people, they have like literally other artists work so that they can um, solve the problems by looking at these other works. Um, like for me, I don't really use, I don't usually like to look at um, other people's work when I'm working on a project just because I want to be 100% not affected by it. But I do have like photo references. So how do you use your references, especially like with comics? Uh, yeah, I don't really, I never make any sort of like mood board or like anything like that when I'm trying to tackle a piece. Um, I've never, never approached making new work by like in that way. Um, as far as reference for my drawings, uh, I actually don't use that much reference anymore. Uh, I draw the figure so much that I feel like um, the figure is like the one thing that I don't need reference for anymore. And, and I, I'm probably worse. My drawings are probably worse if I use reference. Um, oh, yeah. Where I do use reference a lot is like just drawing anything that I don't draw all the time. Like, what's a bus look like? Or like, what does whatever look like? Like a helicopter or like a palm tree. Um, and usually stuff like that, I, I just look at photos on Google uh, just right. to like see what they are, but I can just kind of recreate. I don't, I just recreate it in whatever format on the page not not like i don't like copy this photo into a drawing like i don't need to go out and shoot reference ever right very much. so yeah that's cool um so you mentioned like right after graduation you went straight to new york and just like i want to do editorial uh but if you just graduated now you know the world is kind of a super challenging thing um, what do you think would be your advice or what do you think you, you would do as uh, a fresh grad if they want to start working in this kind of like situation? Uh, hard to say. I mean, one thing I would for sure do is just like set your expectations realistically. Mm -hmm. um, illustration is not easy, it's an easy path take it's it's really hard and there's a lot of years of like you know such a small percentage of illustrators uh are this are the successful illustrators that you see and so you like your expectations that that is going to become you like statistically that's unlikely you know right. so I think just being prepared to have that job at the restaurant for a few years or like work at, as a barista or like whatever, you know, be, be ready to like, if you really want to be an illustrator to like be in it for the long haul and like be ready to like be broke uh, yeah. before you make any money. And even if you do make money, like I don't make that much money. Yeah. I don't know that many illustrators that make that much money. It, it is a lot of work because sometimes people like ask like oh how much how much do you get for one editorial illustration and then you mention like whatever like 400 500 800 for whatever format and they're like oh that's a lot of money for one picture and you're like yeah but it's not something that i crank up in just 30 minutes one hour sometimes it takes me like a month to get that job kind of thing <laughs> yeah i mean if I break it down, especially because I work pretty fast, if I broke it down to like an hourly rate, like I'm making great money, but you know, I'm not working 40 hours a week. I'm not working close to 40 hours a week because you know, right. I'm at the mercy of whatever work comes my way. You know, I don't, I don't know what my next week is going to look like exactly, much less yeah. my next month. So, you know, if I was working full time, the jobs were just pouring in. Yeah. I'd be making bank, but you know, that's not, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's the reality. Like, <laughs> of, of the, of all the successful illustrators you see online, that's maybe the reality for like 10%, you know? Yeah. And that's like from the successful illustrators who are probably just also like 
ten percent of all the experience in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I worked at restaurants and and cafes only up until a few years ago. So I was working, you know, for five plus years. Still, granted, I wasn't working like full time. I was working just a little bit, but you know, by no means was it just like a super success story. Yeah, for for real. Like I think what people are missing out when they see、uh, people post on Instagram, they see the good parts, like oh, the art is super cool, like oh, they're working with these clients now, or sometimes like. If people post like their travel stories or their workspace, it's like, oh damn, it's a super cool thing. But yeah, being able to, I guess, just like creative industry in general, it's it's tough, right? It's a passion thing. Yeah,、oh. I mean, I remember there was kids in college who were like bummed on getting assignments and and like bummed on like working. And it's like, dude, if you can't work right now, <laughs> like when you have to work. What makes you think you're gonna want to keep working like when you're out of school and like you have to have big boy responsibilities? <laughs> you really have to love、oh, it. Because、so、like at school you're already paying to work, and if you don't like doing that,、um, you know you already put the money for you to work. So if no one's gonna, if you don't have any attachment, you're probably just gonna be like, you know, I'm just gonna do some other thing. Oh,、yeah. um, since we're at、um, half an hour mark, we have some questions. So let's try answering some of these.、Okay. Uh, someone asked, "What are some tips for maintaining a disciplined routine?" Tips for what? Maintaining a disciplined routine. Oh,、um, yeah, do you do you have do you have like a schedule for your for your day to day? Not even close. Yeah, <laughs> like I I I talked to you a little bit. Before the stream, but I'm I'm living in a hotel right now,、mm -hmm. uh, in Mexico, and like just surfing a lot.、Uh, yeah, I don't have routine at all right now, which is pretty nice. But I also don't have any work because COVID is like, you know, doing its thing. But yeah,、uh, yeah so I'm not much of a schedule guy, but. I think one thing I am big on is like having your workspace.、Mm -hmm. uh, that that for me to answer the question is like a huge part of like maintaining any sort of serious practice is like having your one zone that is like where your creative juice can flow, and that's just like where you get work done. And、mm -hmm. ideally, it can be separate from like where you have fun too. I know a lot of、yeah. people don't have that luxury,、uh, but having having some sort of at least mental separation is essential. Like I know you mentioned that you don't have a routine per se, like you don't wake up at six hours and start working on it. But I just feel like I feel like you have that discipline on like you keep making art, you know. So keeping the what? You keep making art. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, how do you how do you push yourself, or is this because you like it, so you just like it? Yeah, I think it's mostly it's because I'm just compelled to, like、mm. I start to go crazy if I don't. <laughs>、um, and you know, I guess that's like a good a good thing in some ways, but sometimes you just have to give it a break and like, you know, just let Instagram. Just go quiet for a little while and just have fun, or like take a take a breather. And sometimes, sometimes it is like since I've been here surfing and away from my studio, like at the beach, it's been like hard for me to like get serious and like you know I have a lot of comic projects I'm like trying to work on. It's been hard to like get in that zone, and so it's sometimes you know I don't I don't have quite the Solution. Sometimes I am defeated <laughs> and do nothing. But I think it's nice when it's on your own terms. You know, like sometimes when, let's say, there's a family thing, and then I just have to go, and it's kind of like a rest that I don't plan, and I go crazy from that because, like, man, I need to draw. I need to draw, but 
if there's no time or workspace for me to do that. But if, like, if I, mean, I decided, sorry, what? One thing that's been great, great for me all is like always having a little sketchbook. I usually have like a little pocket-sized sketchbook, mm -hmm. and just that and a pen is enough to to satisfy the urge, if need be. <laughs> and you know, most most of my posts online or on Instagram or whatever is usually just out of my sketchbook, unless it's like a paid job or like some bigger project. Like most of my stuff is like out of the sketchbook. Yeah. So. That's important. All right. Important part. The next question, and probably the one of the last two questions, is um, someone asked, like, how do we choose our color palette? Hmm. That's kind of like a tricky question, right? Do you have a, a specific way you choose your color palette, or it has become kind of like second nature? I don't have a specific way at all. Um, I don't use any sort of like color picker, or like widgets or like mm -hmm. anything like that. Uh, my my coloring process is extremely mechanical and like very unpainterly, and it, mm -hmm. and so I sort of like create. You know, I make the flats for my illustrations, and yeah. I make masks of the different colors, and. Um, then at the end, I sort of just like grab, take the slider and like slide it around, <laughs> and uh, yeah, see see kind of where that goes, and like just kind of plug things around. I mean, most of my colors end up being kind of the same. It's a lot of red, red and blue, and uh, I think that's just like personal taste. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, a lot a lot of it is is like sort of sort of that visual literacy I, I mentioned like mm -hmm. knowing knowing when a color and just like basic theory and like just knowing when something is not working or like whatever uh, something that helps a lot too for people who are having trouble if you're using like Photoshop or so something like that or even watercolor or procreate is after you've picked some colors like setting another layer of color like a watercolor wash layer or something and like changing the layer styles and that yeah. kind of that kind of helps like unify things a bit i usually end up doing that for just about everything i do the multiply layer is my best friend yeah and there's a fun here's a fun tip is if you're if you're on the uh layer styles yeah settings if you hit shift plus or minus oh. mm -hmm. shift plus or minus it goes through the all the layer styles quickly oh, like it goes up and down yeah so like oh, sometimes you know i don't know what half of those things actually do but you're just hitting shift plus or minus and you're just kind of seeing how it all changes and sometimes you'll end up on one weird one that you've never used before but this is kind of, it's kind of working yeah. and then you just lower the opacity or whatever this, that's so true because like I'm like color dodge. What does color dodge do? But it looks cool. <laughs> gonna yeah. There. <laughs> Sometimes it's like changes the entire thing like completely, and you're like, oh, this isn't at all what I had in mind, but it's working. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you have to have that kind of like let go to a certain degree, because otherwise all your work's just gonna be boring. Because you're just gonna okay. I know I'm gonna put this one layer. I'm gonna put a multiply on top of it. I'm gonna do this, and that's it. And that's probably like one of the main reasons for me, at least, when I start getting burn burnout, is because I have too much of a system going on, and not enough of a accident type of thing happening. In my world. Yeah, I feel that for sure. That's like very a big symptom of mine when I'm doing this real like mechanical color stuff. It's like you know, no. I don't feel like I'm learning anything or like discovering anything new. So true, yes. <laughs> Which is hard to when you're like, you know, trying to color like a scene, a crowd scene of like 200 people. And it's like, yeah, you know, just happens. clicking away. It's not like, it's just, yeah, it's, not, it's not something that you do. Especially if it is for client work with tight deadlines. Yeah. All right. Although, uh, re well. Recently, I made a 
I haven't shared it yet, but I, I, I was working on a sticker pack. Actually, I have been sharing some of the little illustrations that will end up being stickers. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of having fun with colors there. Still pretty mechanically, like, you know, using the magic wand tool and, like, filling stuff in. But I feel like I was kind of doing some stuff with color that I don't usually do. And uh, yeah. just kind of more offbeat color combinations. And that's that's just been fun to, like, see my work a little differently. Yeah, I think it's, like, sometimes... Um the fun part is not even about the process but about like you know trying out new colors or trying out different contexts is it the the the, the series with like you know the unknown instrument the guy holding that like curve stuff is that the one that you're gonna make stickers the, yeah yeah that's, that's one of the stickers yeah yeah, yeah. I, cool. I don't find myself using green very often green or orange and um I don't know why, I just can't feel like I can fit it in. Oh, hold um, on. Oh, hold on. Um, someone just came in. I just need to pass them quickly. Good. It's all good. I'll be back. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Um, yeah, I, use, I, I usually have a hard time fitting like certain colors into my normal illustrations, and so, yeah, for like the unknown instrument guy, he's like really green, and yeah, uh, I feel like that's cool. uh, it's just cool for me. Yeah, just to see, kind of play around there. Right. We have one question, and then I'll ask my last question. Um, when did you start doing digital drawings? Um, you started probably. Traditionally, you know, or if you start digital right off that. I mean, obviously, when I was a kid, I didn't have <laughs> digital stuff. But I feel like I was kind of on the digital train pretty early. Like, I had a tablet when I was in high school, which was like, you know, over 10 years ago. It was like a yeah, while ago. Early. And I was like really stoked on it and this was when I wanted to be like a, di a video game concept artist and I was like on DeviantArt and like everything was so digital uh, and then I went to school and kind of went back to the basics you know uh, yeah. trying out all these new mediums and like learning how to oil paint and like acrylic and gouache watercolor and all that stuff and uh, but yeah, so I was doing traditional again. I mean, I never stopped traditional, but I found that I liked to draw traditionally and my drawings turned out better traditionally, but I liked mm -hmm. finishing everything digitally and it turned out better digitally than coloring traditionally. Um, and I think having to work like traditionally like that and then bring it to digital is faster, not because you end it with a digital work, but because you start traditionally, right? Because sometimes when I just start drawing digitally, I start zooming in and then like drawing the nose reels, drawing the hair on the nose and like drawing yeah. every single, yeah. Yeah, totally. And like, you know, I hold my pen often like really far out, like way out here. And, um, yeah. and I draw so small that like digitally, I'm usually like really tied up on the grid and it's like really zoomed in. And so like a lot of just the magic of like your gesture and like simplification of forms and like cartooning and all that kind of goes away when you can just zoom in and like kind of becomes life lifeless yeah so i'm still trying to find the balance because most of my commercial work within the past year or so has been almost all digital i, I like even the drawing part just because it's like time saver and you know certain things are easier to do digitally for sure um, i guess the revision part i guess but for something like comics and like prints and stuff like that, I usually go back to traditional because that's just what's fun for me. And I think uh, that's what people like more, I guess. Yeah. Cool. All right, this will be my last question. Um, so I know you've been like doing like your experiments 
and you try to push yourself. So, um, what kind of like advice, or not even advice, or what kind of like personal experience that you would share um, for people who feel like they're at the stagnant? that they are not moving anywhere with their work? Um, my advice that I feel like I needed to hear at some point was just like, realize that your worth as like a person and like in life is not like with your success as an illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, and like appreciate just like all the other good things you have going for you, hopefully in life, like your friendships and like your hobbies and like other activities and just like, you know, what, what you have going for you because I had a lot going for me at like friends and like, you know, was happy or I had a lot going for me except for my career for a long time. And it was still like really bumming me out and, uh, I put way too much worth and probably still do in like uh, career stuff. And that's just not healthy for anyone. And if you're feeling stagnant, just don't let it get you too down. Cause like, you know, there's still people out there who care about your work and care about you. And hopefully you have some other stuff that is fulfilling besides just drawing. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's true. Something you need to take care of, like your work as you. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, the success of your work, you know, albeit somewhat skill based, is not in your control. And, like, you know, you don't right. really want to have your whole well being and mental health in the state of like other people's <laughs> hands. Yeah. You know. All right. Um, I, I was going to end it, but do you have like, one more minute because there's one question that someone asked it's kind of interesting um what is the most important thing to maintain an identity as a creator an identity as a what a creator man serious questions here yeah right um, well, I most guess for me, sorry sorry what was yeah, go, no you, you, you go ahead I guess for me, it kind of ties back to what you were saying, like appreciating the other things that's not my work. Because at the end of the day, I cannot make work if I'm running dry, you know? All that comes from something, right? So like just being with friends, just being, uh, listening to music that I like, making sure that uh, I'm doing things that I really enjoy, because that kind of feeds back into my work and my identity. I guess I can just have my identity as the guy who draws. <laughs> then what am I gonna draw? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. I guess I guess like yeah, I'm not that worried about my identity as an illustrator because it's just like channeling my interests, you know. Yeah. Um. I guess just keep doing what you want to be doing and like try not to. Um, you know, if you're like really loving someone's work or like, you know, just try and digest people's work and influence in like a tasteful way and like, uh, you know, filter it through your own experiences. And hopefully your identity as an artist just comes naturally and you don't have to think about it too much, uh, which I feel like is the case for me. All right. Um, well, that was more time. I told you I was going to take 30 minutes of your time, but I took more. <laughs> I thought it was going to be an hour, so this is early for me. Oh, really? I mean, if you're if you're down to continue, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know what else I'm going to do to this drawing. I, I drew it a lot faster than I thought I was going to. <laughs> is that like uh, Loki of Flex? Like, oh, I'm drawing so much faster than I thought I could. Can you like bring it up so uh it's okay. yeah sorry yeah, my my setup is weird i have like a coat hanger oh no actually like your setup is the best out of like all the other ones because at least it hits all the the whole thing oh, that's cool <laughs> so yeah i don't know where oh. i was going with this but yeah so um I, I do I do have another 
question that pops up in my um, when you make your work right especially like as a comic artist do you think of like a story first or do you think of a mood first or do you just because sometimes for me i always want to write stories but i don't usually start with story it's always more of like a mood for me and that becomes hard when i'm trying to read a series of you know narrative series like a storybook or a comic book so how about you like how did you how did yeah, you a lot, of, a lot of my drawings start like with no idea where they're gonna go and i'm just drawing a figure pretty much just about every drawing starts with a figure um doing some sort of pose and it's like it might have a pose of something of like looking like they're holding something but i don't know what they're holding yet and then i kind of just go from there uh that's not always the case but that's like pretty a pretty natural occurrence um huh. sometimes i don't know like if it's gonna go more like sci-fi or like fantasy or like a mix i i kind of like i'm always uh going between between yeah. both of them uh, but sometimes sometimes it's a little more thought out like i uh i'll do sometimes i do sketches in photoshop uh because it's easier to like move things around like i i can draw fine in photoshop or like digitally pretty naturally to, to make rough drawings, but then to make like polished drawings, that's where I really like freeze up and like get yeah. really stiff to make clean lines. Also because like, you know, this is a really fine tip of a pen. And then the Apple yeah. pencil is like so thick that it's like, <laughs> look at that. I feel like I'm drawing with a crayon or something. And, like, <laughs> so, so I, sometimes I do rough drawings all digital and then i'll like i won't like scan it or trace it or anything but just like have the composition figured out and then redraw it uh yeah it's, i do that too it's much faster that way if you can change like the elements of the position quickly yeah oh tim um i want to continue but let me end this call first the instagram live first and then i'll restart a new one because Instagram always stops me at the 45 minutes, 15 minutes point, and I don't want to lose the, like they just stop it and I don't get to save the video. So okay. let me end and show you this one first. And I'll start a new one. All right. Er earlier during quarantine, I watched um, a seven and a half hour long movie. <laughs> and I, I did the whole thing. Time? in one sitting. It's a movie called Set in Tango. Oh, I've heard of that. It's really an intense movie and it was really good, but definitely crazy long. And I have a different Instagram like that I existed before this one that's just like all personal. And I, I live streamed the whole thing. <laughs> and it was just like a, a video of me sitting in my bed, like eating popcorn for seven hours. Seven hours. <laughs> But I had to make, I had to break it up into eight different streams. You, you can probably like post it on YouTube, just like a guy sitting on bed for eight hours. <laughs> and you like, get like 10 million views. It was mostly just a complete joke, but it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> was funny. Oh, um, when are you planning to go back to New York? Um, so I'm, I leave in two weeks and I'm going back to Missouri, which is where I went to high school. And I have a few family members and friends still there. And I'll be there for a few days and then I'll head back to New York. You were in the middle of things like with the protesting and everything. I've just been looking at stuff on social media. In the what, sorry? Oh, you were in the middle of that too, like the protest happening in Brooklyn? And yeah, I'm just seeing things from social media, and it's already crazy. Like, how 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 did it feel? I mean, it was inspiring, man. It was like protests were happening everywhere, uh, more than I've ever seen in New York. 
cool. Like every borough had so many marches going on and like such good energy. And I was going to as many as I could, like, well, like maintaining my like work life going to. And uh, it was it was a great time. I plan on returning and protesting some more when I get home. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All, all everything I, I was a part of was was peaceful and good vibes. And I know like the media loves to like talk about how they're like really crazy, but it really is just like only gets crazy when the police starts like beat people up and then people get mad. Nothing is actually happening and then they initiate stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm really wishing all the best, not like in terms of like, oh, hope things go back to normal, but you know, for real change to take part. Yeah, man, I'm still hoping to make it over to Indonesia. Yeah, let me know. Um, I'll usually find you that rental car that you can just drop off anywhere. You think you'll be uh, over there for, for a while? Yeah, I think so. Um, so part of it is like, I should make my visa application. But um, U.S. embassies, like all over the world, are still closed. So I cannot get the interview for the visa card. Uh, so I'm just waiting. But <clears throat> one thing that I really like is like the flexibility of being a no trader is a really nice thing. Because I can literally be anywhere and still do my job, you know? For sure. Or even if I don't have work, I can still be anywhere and still create things. And better skill, I can like learn new things and add it to my work. Yeah, I love to travel. I've traveled a lot the last few years and having a mobile like setup with the iPad and like AstroPad and all that mm -hmm. has been really, really amazing and like I know a lot of people are getting like a taste of like the remote life with COVID. Yeah. And it's a good life, man. Yeah, I really can't complain. I, Part of me wishes I that I had had like a normal corporate job some sometime to just like yeah. <laughs> what that was all about, but maybe one day. For sure. There are like parts of me who are like that's like um Oh man, I wish I'd just go to nine to five and then go back home and just not have to worry about anything and just watch TV. But then like part of me is like, oh, but this is nice to you know. I can be my own boss. Yeah. It's like you're never not like thinking about work. Yeah, obviously. I think that's a big thing about being a freelancer too. Just having to have that mindset that you say um, appreciating other things in life because your worth is not dictated by your work. Um, when did you start feeling that way? When did you start realizing that, you know, my work is not who I am? I mean, I hate to say it, but part of it was when I was like actually starting to get work and was like, you know, feeling like I had like re achieve some sort of level of success uh, which you know question mark on that but yeah uh, but and then part of it part of it hasn't gone away you know I still think about it all the time and like you know I haven't I haven't made a comic book in like over a year plus or like you know really worked. I've like conceptualized a lot, but I haven't like drawn many comics and like, that's like my favorite thing. And so definitely get down about that sometimes, but it's all good. It's coming. But yeah, I think, um, I think it's true what you say. Like, um, you don't start feeling different until you start getting work. Cause I guess it's okay to make your work, the purpose of your life when you're Still trying to get work because that's kind of like a goal you're trying to set but I think once you get that goal you just don't feel that like 
oh, now I got this one job, and I have to get three, I have to get five a day, I have to get ten a day. I think there has to be a moment when you decided, like, okay, I'm getting by. Maybe now I should focus on other aspects of my life that's not just paper and pencil. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's part of it is that my, my, uh, my goals were so low. It was like, I want to be not poor. Yeah, <laughs> me too. And like, that's question mark. Like, am I even not poor now? I don't really know, but like, I'm, it's like, you know, making entry level wage on doing illustration. And that's like success for me. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, that's cool, yeah. It's not always about how much you make, right? It's like what standard, what bar you set as a as your standard. Yeah, and I, I think I value more, like more than money. I value my time and like my uh, being able to still draw what I like to draw and like my own freedom as an artist, and so. I think there was definitely paths that I could have taken that would have made me more money uh, that I'd still enjoy doing, but uh, that's just not the end game, you know. As for many illustrators, don't don't go into the field for fame and fortune. Yeah. And another answer to that question, honestly, that was really huge for me was just like social media, um, you know. There's times where, I mean, just having the support of like everyone who's like watching right now or like, like over the years, like buying my stuff, it's like means, means so much to like my own confidence and my own like motivation to like keep making things and like thinking that they're any good. Honestly, like, um, oh, I think even my thoughts are different. So, like, hold on. I think the either my life or your life is frozen. Oh, you're back. <laughs> I went into low power mode. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what were you saying? Um, where where did I lose you? Uh, I lost you just at the end of like, I think like one minute ago at the end of you talking about that. Uh, I'll just say my thoughts again. Um, to answer the question of like, when that feeling went away, uh, a, a huge part of it too was just like having social media and like having that support system. And like, I don't really know what I did to like, earn the following because I've kind of just been doing the same thing and not like thinking about it too much but I've just it's sort of worked out and it's definitely like keeps me motivated and like uh, keeps me feeling from like feeling doubtful sometimes uh, yeah. and I'm always extremely thankful for that but that can be a slippery slope to you know worrying too yeah. much about what your following things. Uh, fortunately, I don't really uh, think about that too much. Just keep it. Yeah. Like sometimes I feel really bad because like I know people really support me. Sometimes on social media when they write comments or just like you know when they like something and they say nice things about it, I feel really like thankful for that. But at the same time, I feel really bad. Like I cannot seem to reciprocate the. You know, sometimes I just. I just, I'm not a good writer in terms of writing comments. Some people are really good at expressing their gratitude. I'm super bad with that. But what you say is true because, like, uh, there are times when you're just like, oh, man, I'm not making good stuff. And then people are like, oh, like, how did you do that? And you feel like, oh, I guess I'm still making things that are worth something, you know? <laughs> it's not completely. Yeah. And it's, it's weird, like, getting a bigger following because uh, people probably think you're, like, some mystical, like, magical figure. But, like, 
I don't yeah. feel like I'm like uh I'm still like grateful for everything and I still like look at everything and like I still am like completely stoked on all things social media and I'm not like I don't know it, it doesn't it hasn't like stopped being cool to like which is why I kind of stuff. yeah which is why I kind of like doing this kind of talk and just like sharing my views because you know when you see people's work yeah, sometimes you feel it's cool and, and stuff, but it doesn't mean that we do all the cool stuff all the time. <laughs> we feel and we feel, we feel like shit a lot of times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also just like, you know, I don't post that much personal stuff. Yeah. I don't like uh, post like advertisements or like contests or like whatever. I just post my drawings and... Uh, you know, I'm not like, that's, it's just as simple as that. I just try and keep it pretty basic and it's sort of worked for me so far. So I just, just keep doing it. That's what I care yeah. about is drawing. Yeah, I'm still trying to keep that. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty bad. I've been you promoting stuff on Instagram. Like, because I don't like telling people, like, hey, do this. Sorry, am I back? No, yeah, I can hear you. That when I'm promoting stuff on just check it. Instagram, just because I never really want it to be a business thing. Yeah. But sometimes it just helps. Um, so, yeah, trying to. I mean, heck, heck yeah, man. Do, do what you got to do. Do, do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think every illustrator, res like, respects the hustle and, yeah. <laughs> like, cares if you don't look cool or, like, someone or, like, looks like you're trying too hard. Like, do whatever you, do whatever's working for you. Well, sometimes you know, it's not even, like, oh, I'm, it's not even, like, I feel judged that I'm, I will seem like I'm trying too hard, but it's more, like, I don't want to use like following as like a money mix, you know? It's legit like people supporting me. So I just want to reciprocate the support. And if I can make something that makes people happy, or if I can just continue making whatever I'm making without having to like... Like monetize it? Yeah, monetize it. Well, I'm, that's super idealistic, right? Because like, you gotta pay people. And just, yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I'm not doing enough with like, you know, once Instagram fizzles away and like I have no, no, nothing, I'll be like, damn, I should have, I should have done that. Like, uh, you should have jumped on that TikTok board. Yeah, I should have, I should have done that draw this in your style contest and then like <laughs> advertise my like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well. There's still time. Like, yeah, there's always time. You can't be uh, taken straight about right now. Just um, get a focus on my craft, making what I love. Sometimes I forget doing that, to be honest. With, like, especially when, like, there are times when, as a freelancer, you have a lot of work, right? And that's when it's actually the hardest to make something good for me. Just it becomes like what you say, mechanical, just getting it done. Totally. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you go long time without work and then sometimes it just pours in and it's like sleepless nights and it's like <laughs> hard, to, hard to be like inspired when you're like third night in the row of like three hours of sleep and you're like, not to fall asleep at your desk and you still have to like try and make make good good art yeah but then there's this tiny part of you like oh man if i don't take the job though when else am i getting this job <laughs> yeah no I, I definitely don't turn down jobs almost ever i mean yeah i turn down like really sucky paying jobs that are like people taking advantage of you but like 
I know it's not, I've never turned down a good job just for my own sanity. Yeah. <laughs> that itself sounds like we're already kind of halfway insane. Yeah. I remember one night I had, there was an illustration that I had been working on and I thought it was due not the next day, but the day after. And I was like really, really tired because I had been working a lot. Yeah. And I was in bed, I was like tucked into bed at like 11 p.m., which is early for me. Yeah. And I was so tired that I was like, this is good. Like, I'm gonna fall asleep, I'm gonna wake up, feel great. And for some reason I felt just compelled to recheck my email to confirm the deadline. And sure enough, the deadline was the next morning. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and it was like the most heartbreaking thing. I was like finally tired enough to go to bed. And it was like, dang, I'm going to be up till five this morning. <laughs> That's the best kind of feeling, right? Like when you just, I want to sleep, but now I'm just going to have to work. I love this. <laughs> That's really when it soul was sucked out of you. <laughs> uh, but I feel like if you survive that and you still do the drawings anyway, that's when you know that, okay, I can do this for the rest of my life. You know? Yeah, and it turned out pretty good, honestly. The illustration did. It worked it's out. always like that, that last minute thing that you, you thought you're not gonna have enough time. And surprisingly, it's not as bad. I don't know if it is because like our standard is already low for that piece or, or you just get in the zone more because you're panicking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that looks cool. Thanks. Yeah, I think I'll show you these drawings and I'm gonna wrap up, grab some dinner. I wasn't yeah, these yeah. were just some old sketches I had in this on this Bristol board. I have some some other drawings. I don't use I don't always go in with pencil first yeah um like in my sketchbook almost never and my lines tend to get even more wiggly when i'm doing just straight pen because it's more like i don't know where i'm gonna go with it but these and this this one i felt like i should do some pencil first to uh yeah. to just yeah, like have, have, have a better idea of what was going on so yeah um, those are cool yeah oh. so any any last thoughts well just just thank you for for this for spending an hour with me <laughs> hope it wasn't uh, it wasn't a crazy hour it was fun having you and it was cool looking at your drawings and just seeing you do the way and thanks for answering all the questions man. yeah thanks for having me it was fun to just talk and talk to someone else during this covid time <laughs> yeah. yeah, so true. I really miss uh, just having no more hangouts with buddies. Well, Let's come back. Did. Have fun with uh, the next two weeks in Mexico. Thank you. Take, flight home. Take it easy. Yeah, man. All right, I'm going to end the live. And... <laughs>